let's talk about your approach to improvising. Now, I know sometimes we have songs that we work out and kind of play in a specific way, especially if there's a head to a song, for example. But And we, we can talk about that, too. Um, Songwriting is always a fun thing. But yeah. generally speaking, improvising, what's your approach? You tend to work things out, tend to have licks that kind of live in a song, and then you allow the moment to take it, or you, uh, like Steve Baker in the interview, where he says that he completely blanks his mind, blanks late, and plays from a subconscious level. What's, yeah. what's your approach? I'm definitely more of that approach. Blank, blank slate, my mind is just open. It's, it's shut down, really. You know, we always try to tell students, try not to think through your solo, which is counterintuitive because they're thinking through the process when they work through it. And, it, and it, the transition is like flipping a switch. And I think some of us want to like flip it really slow. <laughs> and so you hear that little noise. If you've ever taken a switch, it goes, <laughs> and you can get the static point. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like that. You just got to flip it. Mm -hmm. and, and what you have to do is trust your instincts. Get up there and play what you feel. And that's hard to teach somebody how to do that. I'm a blank slate. I, I get up there. Um, and I do think that there are certain riffs that live with a song that sort of call for it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, either, you know, Think of Jimmy Rogers, you know, walking by myself. Um, ba -da -da, da -da. There's certain melodies that live in a song that you want to learn as a player. Maybe it's an instrumental and you're learning an instrumental and now you really just need to learn it note for note. Mm -hmm. But as far as an improvisation approach, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I play that. I, I, it's like anything. You've got your stock riffs that you've, you've, you've worked on. Hey, but at the same time, you have no idea how they're going to come out, the phrasing, the order. Mm -hmm. For me, it's just let's, just, let's just be in the moment and see what happens. When you have a student who's fairly new to the improvising process, are there any tools that you use to help to get them started? Because they might, you know, it's hard to move out of the conscious brain to the subconscious mind yes. if there's not much sitting in the subconscious yeah. mind yet. Or well, you just don't do improvising. You have them memorize pieces, and that's going to be their highest probability of success. We do a little bit of the, let's take a couple, um, like the song Easy is a very common one to take from Big Walter Horton, let's say. It's approachable um, for any level player. Mm -hmm. So I do a little bit of that. I also like to take the time to build in some rhythm playing and help them just get a sense of their own rhythm, for better or for worse. Where are you at with your timing and your rhythm? All these little things will translate, the hope is, in the end it'll translate to this coming out musically, right? And then um, I've been focusing most of my time on, on these, the, what I can't get out of my head, the bass lines and grooves, mm -hmm. you know? And just taking the time to teach them. So think about it this way. Anything you want to be able to improvise to, you've got to be able to lay it down on the harmonica. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a slow blues, a funk, you, I should be able to pick it up right now and be on the spot and just Here's how I play a rhythmic version of that. Even if it involves some riffing in it, mm -hmm. it's got to have the groove because the ideas and the riffs without the groove are pointless. And you're talking about, like the bass line you're talking about. Yeah. So that they can immediately latch on to something and it's a, a strategy for them to take in onto the stage mm -hmm. and get settled. I'm gonna play Because that's what I'm doing a lot. I'll mm -hmm. just fall into the groove. And then you can learn to chop the groove and play with the groove. Mm -hmm. You might just go. You might just hear just part of it and leave some mm -hmm. stuff out or play with that groove for a minute. Yeah. So if I'm the bass player, too, from the one. Still in the pocket. Yeah. yeah. So I Next. might, I might, if the bass is going, my strategy might just be to play some of what you had played instead mm -hmm. of reacting to it. I'm a, for a beginner, I'd, I would actually advise that because then they're taking the time to get settled, so their heart's pumping. That's the biggest issue. Mm. The, yeah, yeah. the heart's going. Now I'm nervous. My heart's, and now my breathing is off. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what I see happening. So now their breathing's off, everything's off. Everything you've shown them, all these great things that they were ready to lay out, they had some ideas that they want, it's all out the door because the breathing's off. So the first step is to get settled in your breathing and in your own skin, being comfortable just being up there when you're playing or not playing. That's imperative because I think so many players 
feel this pressure, this responsibility that something great must come out. And the reality is it's they're putting that pressure on themselves. So just being able to learn how to control your breath and your, your heart rate, for example, would be a great exercise. How do you do that? You hold a long note. Let your heart pound. Feel what it feels like to let your heart pound. But also feel what it feels like when you're forced to hold a long note. It'll start to slow your heart rate down. At least it does for me. Because I'm breathing. I'm forcing my breath real slow and regulated in. And then I'm going to let it out nice and easy, which is how, we, how I would slow my heart rate down. So I'm playing the way that I need to play to adjust. Mm. But this happens quicker nowadays, you know. I've been doing it a while, so it's easier to make those adjustments. So here's a couple more thoughts on my mind for improvisation. I think that the, the biggest challenge that, that faces an average player is that they're stuck. They're not happy with what they're playing. They're, they feel like they're in a rut. And the biggest tip, I would say, is just learning how to use more bent notes often as starting notes in your riffs and your ideas, and sometimes not. And also just breaking free. If your rut is two through four, which it is for most people, just changing up your starting note. Mm -hmm. Just starting somewhere fresh and learning a new idea from seven draw, six draw, six blow, and apply it to the position you're in, whether it's cross or first position. Be able to work your way out of an area so that you never feel trapped. Because I think some people play themselves into a corner and then they're like, what do I do from here? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to do anything, but if you want to learn how to move musically, you've got to learn some of the relationships. Without even talking theory, which is what it is, you've got to learn what these notes mean to each other. And so, not just the two to the three, but the two to the four and the five draw and so on and a bent note over here. There's got to be a relationship so that there's a reason for you to go for that note in that moment. 